Um, hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining the Main Street webinar today about business incentive programs. Um, first, we're going to hear from the Garrison Area Improvement Association, who's going to talk about mm -hmm. some of their programs, and then we'll hear from Ellen Huber from the City of Mandan. Um, like Emily said, I uh, work for the Garrison Area Improvement Association um, as their coordinator. Um, and uh, we are an organization that was established in 1991. We're a 501c6, so nonprofit for economic development. Um, Garrison is a city of about 1,500 within city limits, but we have a good amount of people living just outside city limits, kind of by the lake. We're about three miles from Lake, lake Sakakawea. So I put our general year-round population right around 2,000 or 2,500 um, with some snowbirds that are here in the summer. Um, our organization is a little bit unique in that we are pretty much independent from uh, any municipality, city, or county. Uh, we do rely on some sales and use tax funding for projects or sometimes for operation costs, but those are requested as on an as-needed basis and reviewed by the city council and our sales and use committee. Um, otherwise, we um, have a nonprofit or a charitable gaming organization that we use those profits for uh, economic development purposes. So it's, uh, it's nice to have the autonomy with my board of directors to um, utilize gaming funds or uh, request sales and use funds for projects as, as the board sees fit. Um, and as you can see, we were established in 1991, so we've been around for a while. So I'll jump right into our programs that we um, use for our business incentives. Um, we have quite a few. A uh, few are new. Um, you'll notice a little bit of overlap between some of the different programs that we offer. Um, I think it's just our our purpose or our intent to keep kind of coming up with new programs, new ways to market our services to the local business community, kind of spark ideas with them by you know showing them different programs that we have. Um, but like I said, there's a little bit of overlap that you'll notice. Um, first of all, this is a program we've had for a while. We kind of revamped it somewhat recently, I think three years ago, um, our employee recruitment and retention program. Um, this can be used for tuition reimbursement, student loan payment reimbursement, or home closing costs. Uh, it's mostly because we recognize that we have difficulties in our local businesses in recruiting uh, and retaining employees for positions that require specialized skills or knowledge obtained through post-secondary education. Um, and also we recognize it's hard to recruit employees that are relocating to the uh, garrison area for employment. So we're trying to offer assistance to the businesses and employees to recruit uh, employees and keep them around for long term, hopefully. Um, so uh, this is a maximum grant of $1,500 on a and a dollar for dollar match with the employer. Um, the funds may be escrowed for up to three years to uh, meet employment requirements if desired by the employer, uh, meaning that if they would like to uh, require, you know, three years or, or however many years of employment in the area um, or whatever uh, requirements they have, we will help them with that to keep these employees around as long as we can. And this is a program primarily for employees who have worked for five or less years in their position. An employer may submit an application for a tenured employee with outstanding student loans, training needs, or relocation, home purchase, closing costs. Um, the only requirements we have for this is that uh, the eligible businesses, they have to operate within the garrison area and designate that the employee that they have must be assigned to the garrison area for 60% or more of their work schedule. So if, for instance, we're sharing a physician's assistant with you know, Turtle Lake or something, then in order for them to be um, eligible, they have to be here 60% of the time. Um, and like I was saying, we also use this for our, uh, our teachers in our school. We market this specifically once a year to them for uh, teachers that have five, year, five or less years of experience, um, have... Uh, completed at least one year successfully with Garrison uh, and are contracted for the next year. Typically those grant amounts for the teachers are between 500 and 1,000 depending on the amount of applicants we have and the available funding that we have for that. So uh, next one, we have our nonprofit development and project incentives. 
Um, this is specifically to help our, provide our um, local community development groups with an incentive and cost assistance with the construction or improvement to facilities that will improve the quality of services, recreation facilities, or other public use facilities in the garrison area. Um, this is specifically for kind of our nonprofit or just community groups, um, Chamber of Commerce, city, state, um, those types of groups. Um, the maximum amount of reimbursement is for applications up to 50% of the improvement costs not to exceed 20,000. Um, we started this out as a competitive uh, grant program, I think three years ago, uh, when we've gotten some good projects through because of this. And now it's just, we have it on a year. It's continuously open. People can apply at any time of the year, and we review them as an on an as needed basis. Um, some examples of projects that have been uh, have used this grant. We have our North Dakota Fishing Hall of Fame, they use this to um, do some lighting and exterior signage on their uh, building. Our Parks and Rec Department use this to uh, install some new bathrooms at the city park as well as, um, I think, to help resurface the uh, surface of the, the interior surface of our pool. And then our nursing home as well, they used it to uh, renovate uh, one of their patios, their entrance and signage uh, made it quite quite a bit more attractive, so that was good. Um, let's see. And next we have our business improvement grant. Um, this is definitely our, our widest used grant, and it's been around for quite a while. Um, like everything else, we kind of revamped it a little bit about three years ago, started it as a competitive grant. Um, and now we kind of have it again on a uh, it's open year-round. People can apply any time. We try to encourage them to apply uh, in the winter and spring, hoping that they'll be doing some of the projects throughout the, the summer and complete them by the fall. But uh, we just review the applications as they come in. Um, and like I said, it's a it, kind of a broad grant, just looking to encourage businesses to expand or improve, expand their offerings, expand their services, anything like that. Uh, the maximum is $5,000 or up to 50% of the improvement cost. Um, we also do offer a small uh, interest buy-down on up to 25% of the, of the project cost. And like, like all of our grants, we encourage materials and labor to be used, uh, or that, that are being used to be purchased or sourced locally. Um, we have had a lot of use of this grant over the years. Um, some examples, we have our, our local hardware store used it to uh, repurpose a storage area and make it into a, a more retail space for themselves. They just had to um, replace the concrete floor and spray foam in the ceiling, that kind of stuff, in order to make it a usable retail space. Um, our yard and garden center and also caterer used it to do a storefront improvement and some parking lot repairs. Uh, one of our local event venues has used it to create um, more usable outdoor sheltered space um, for kind of for the caterers or that kind of thing, also for more outdoor sheltered seating. Um, uh, one of our uh, farther out, um, uh, let's see, Indian, <laughs> our Indian Hills Resort, they have a campgrounds as well as condos. When they use this grant to um, help build a new condo unit on their property. We have used it for daycares, restaurants, you name it. This one has been used quite a bit. Um, let's see. And then we have our marketing grant. Um, this one is, has also been around for a while and is pretty widely used. Um, as a pretty self-explanatory, it's for marketing assistance, but specifically for new businesses or the businesses who are expanding their offerings, uh, expanding uh, what products and services they offer. Um, can be used for just about any kind of marketing, television, radio, website, signage, logo, clothing, um, uh, anything like that. Uh, we specifically have it marked as for new businesses or new offerings so they won't, we don't just become a, a, a source of marketing funds for uh, as a line item on someone's yearly budget. But <laughs> so far it's been used well and uh, had some neat projects come through here just for some new businesses or businesses that are expanding. Um, and then we have our entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial grant, which is new this year. It's a, a little bit unique in that the grant dollar amounts are pretty low, but they are available to um, 
people who are just in the concept only phase of trying to to see if a, if a business is viable or see if it's something they're interested in. We provide uh, $250 uh, in three phases, so $750 total, uh, based on which uh, which stage the business is in development. So even if they are just concepts only, then we will give them up to $250 as a match um, of their own dollars. If they are looking at costs for researching, attending training conferences, um, purchase of minor equipment just to see if it's something they want to pursue. And then as you can see, the, we also provide another $250 for business startup um, and then for the business development. And at that point, they can kind of move into some of the other grant programs. Um, we, this hasn't been very widely used yet. We're trying to uh, pinpoint some of the um, potential entrepreneurs in the area. We have used it once so far in combination with our low interest loan pool for a local business that makes custom uh, crankbaits and lures. Um, so we gave him some funds to, from this to help with some of his marketing costs, as well as a low interest loan that he's using to expand his business and um, really get out there in the market. And he's been doing very well. Um, a, a business can, if they are kind of all through all the first three stages, they can apply for the lump sum of $750 for this. But like I said, once they kind of are through those stages, they generally fit into a different um, program a little bit better. Let's see. And the market adjustment program, um, I like to call this the Dollar General program just because we are in a situation where um, a Dollar General is looking to um, – build here and that has made a lot of our existing businesses very nervous. And so this is an attempt to encourage them to look at what offerings they have that might overlap with the Dollar General that they're likely not going to be able to be competitive with um, and then replace those products with something uh, unique that will make them stand out and that won't be offered at you know a store like Dollar General. Um, an example that we've been using is with our Yard and Garden Center. If they wanted to uh, get rid of some of their um, inventory related to, I don't know, maybe uh, pesticides or um, supplies that you could get at a Dollar General, I'm not. Uh, then and look into something like offering soil testing, uh, that kind of thing, so that they would be offering a service that would be more unique, not offered by Dollar General, and would keep them viable and competitive. Um, and not feel so, not be as financially threatened by the opening of a big box store around here. Um, so the maximum per grant, uh, grant for this is a thousand dollars, and but the funds will be used for product displays, marketing, promotional events, um, demonstrations for the new products and services. Uh, we're not looking to pay for um, pay for actual inventory that they're purchasing, but they would be able to use our low interest loan pool for that. So this can be used in conjunction with that. Um, haven't had use of this yet. I've been talk, talking to a lot of local businesses trying to encourage them to consider um, what they could be adding to their business that would make them stand out and make them more viable once Dollar General is here. And we've, so we've been having some conversations. I haven't had anything happen yet, but we're still, Dollar General is still in just kind of the planning phase. So we'll see if when things move forward, if people get a little bit more uh, fire in their belly for using this one. Um, and this one, all, the Community Event Creation and Enhancement Grant is also uh, new this year. Um, I think we thought of it this year because in our last year's Dickens Village Festival, that's our um, Christmas time festival that we have every year, we, the Dickens Committee um, decided to take a risk and uh, booked a more expensive performer for a night, the Beatles tribute band. And so they were taking a, a pretty sizable risk on how much they were spending on the entertainment for the purpose of bringing more people to the festival and to the community. Um, and it actually ended up going very well, but it was a, a sizable risk for them to take. And so we're looking at this as if there is another event in our, this community or any of the communities that we um, have gaming in, which would be uh, Garrison, Max, Underwood, Beulah, um, and Riverdale. Any of those communities have events that either exist and they want to expand, or if they want to create a new event 
then we can uh, provide them with up to $1,000 or 50% of the out-of-pocket costs related to the development or expansion to help mitigate some of the risk um, of either starting an event or expanding upon it so that they don't uh, go broke trying to improve something or expand upon what they're offering. Um, we just had our first use of this um, for um, the summer event in Underwood because they're expanding um, some of their events and uh, needed a little bit of help with that. So uh, we're hoping that it works out well for them. We'll be seeing their event is at the end of June here. Um, but yeah, just trying to get people to think outside the box for bringing people into their community because obviously we want there to be an economic benefit opportunity from attendance for the, from this uh, event or any event that they're using to, uh, or putting on to uh, help benefit the community. Um, and as you can see, the eligible entities, um, state, county, city, schools, chamber of commerce, economic development, nonprofits, local clubs, churches, all school unions, all sorts of stuff. So, and they just have to um, write us, give us a proposal indicating um, the history of the event or the event they want to create. And we look at it as a as a whole, and we go from go from there. And we've set aside some funds for this, so hopefully we'll get um, at least consideration from all the communities that it's available to. And this is one so far, so hopefully more to come. And this is also a new program this year, our Rent Incentive Program. Um, this came about because um, as the economy has slowed down, you know, we're right on the edge of what we would call oil country. And so we saw a little bit of a boom from that and then a little bit of a slowdown. Luckily, we um, are heavily tourist-based and are, I wouldn't say entirely immune from the oil fluctuations, but... Um, we've seen a, you know, a little bit of a slowdown, a little bit of hardship for businesses in the area. And so we've ended up with um, a few vacant buildings in our business, business district that uh, owners are trying to either rent out part of the space, all of the space, um, so looking to fill vacant spaces on Main Street. So this uh, program is offered directly to uh, the building owners as a way to lower their rent costs or lower their uh, lower the cost of rent that they're advertising to potential tenants, um, hoping that we can either get some businesses that um, are needing a lower rent cost so that they will fill some of these spaces. Looking at potentially businesses that are, exist in Minot and Bismarck that will, would be willing to um, be located in Garrison a couple days a week, but. And so this would help lower that rent cost for them to be able to, to use some of these spaces. Um, Lindsay? Uh, we're not looking, yeah. Question on that, this is Ellen Huber. Um, do yeah. you, have you experienced any problems with inflated lease rates by landlords? We, ha we haven't had any, we we're just marketing this to our um, landlords now. And that is something that we are very much looking out for we're hoping that by offering this to the business, to the uh, building owners directly, uh, and and to be quite honest, we know what everything is being marketed for right now, so we would be able to tell if they were decided to inflate it because of this offering. Um, that's you know benefit of a small town, I guess. Um, but we're hoping that by offering it directly to the landlords, and we're requiring to see their lease agreement beforehand, and requiring to be a little bit involved in the in the lease process, so we are hopefully ensuring that we're not going to see any inflation because of this. But yes, that is a concern of ours and something that we'll be looking out for as we can continue to uh, pursue uses of this program. Uh, I'm just going to be sending these, this out to our vacant um, building owners this week. So, so we'll see. <laughs> it's a bit of a learning curve, um, but yeah, definitely something we thought of. Um, so does that, does that answer your question? Um, yes, thank you. Just one follow-up. Do you, do you have any cap on their lease rate per square foot? Yes. Um, it, we are capping it at $3 per square foot, and we're not going to exceed covering 600 square feet for any one tenant. So if they happen to have um, you know, a 1,000 square foot building, we will still give them the rent incentive, but only up to 600 square feet, So which would be $1,800. Sorry? I should rephrase that. Do you have a cap on the amount that the landlord can charge to receive the um, rent write down? Um, 
like how that they can charge. Like in other words, just, if they're charging, can they charge no more than ten dollars per square foot, or you know, no, or anything like that? Hmm, that's a good question. We haven't discussed that. Um, okay, nope, no problem. Thank I, you. No, no, that's okay. I think I think what we're looking at is just that we we're aware of what the uh, the current building owners are are uh, marketing their their f properties for right now, and so we. And, it, and we understand that that's probably what they're looking at to be able to cash flow, flow that building. But um, so, yeah, we're just basically hoping to uh, bridge that gap between what they need to cash flow that building, that space, to what some other businesses are able to afford. So I, I think we're just relying on our knowledge of what they're already offering them for to, uh, to help um, mitigate any risk of them uh, overcharging or... Uh, raising their rent amounts because of this program. Sure. I only but, ask yeah, because I notice in our community that some properties are just, quite frankly, a much better value for the dollar. You know, sure. Sometimes sure. a low-quality property is being asked, uh, offered at a much higher lease rate than a higher-quality, more prime property. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, I guess we're we're hoping that some of these uh, property owners will recognize that they're either market, marketing their property at an above market rate or that they're just not going to be able to, to fill the space for what they're offering. And I mean, we're hoping they'll figure it out a little bit on their own, but hoping that this will help kind of spur them in that direction. And we only offer this program for any one tenant for up to a year. So it's kind of, uh, it's not a, um, it's not in perpetuity. It's not forever. So we're hoping they kind of figure it out on their own as they use this program. Um, yeah, no problem. Any other questions on this one? Let's see. If not, I'll move on to a little bit different program. Um, this is in, in um, partnership with our CVB. Um, it's <laughs> a smaller grant program or a smaller incentive. We are just looking to help um, attract fishing and hunting guides to our area since we are right off of Lake Sakakawea. Um and obviously there are many, many areas where guides can uh, can uh, fish out of or hunt out of, so we're trying to get them to come here. Um, so we're offering the guide themselves, provided that they're licensed and insured, uh, $25 in garrison bucks for each qualifying group or client that they um, take fishing or hunting out of this area per day. Um, the group must have used garrison lodging or dining establishments to, to qualify and the guide will have a, the group fill out a survey that they provide to us that gives us information on where they ate or stayed and if they have any um, thoughts for what they'd like to see in our community. Um, and they, then they provide that form to us, and in exchange they get the $25 in garrison bucks, which is, uh, which is money that they can use in any business in garrison. Um, and in addition to that, if the guide provides us uh, 10 or more of these surveys, or guides out of the area 10 or more times, and they're eligible for a uh, matching marketing grant of up to $250 um, with the, the uh, stipulation that they, the marketing that they uh, do must include their offerings in garrison. So we're just trying to pull some business uh, to this area for fishing and hunting since it's such a, a, a big part of our uh, tourist crowd. Um, so... That's that one. Lindsay, how much is, is a little, how much is that program sorry, used? I'm curious. You know, we've had um I think last year we had one guide who guided out of here, I believe it was nine times used it. Um and the C V B Kayla's been doing a great job of trying to reach out to guides that either are in the area or you know, aren't but could be or are part time in this area. So it's it hasn't been used a ton. We had we had marketed it a few years ago before I was here, and I know it was used more then. And then we've been trying to kind of uh, revamp it and market it again. Um, Kayla's been trying to pursue um, guides that would you know want to be CGB members, and then would get a discounted rate on advertising in our adventure guide, and then could use this program. So yeah, since I since I've been here, uh, we've only had I think two guides use this program. But we're hope we've been working on making it a lot more visible and contacting uh, the guys personally to know that make them aware of what what we're doing. So good deal, thanks. Yeah. 
Um, and then, yeah, the Community Betterment Grant. This is uh, used a little bit more by uh, private residents, but it is available to businesses. Um, and this grant has been around for quite a while. Um, we're just looking to help improve um, curb appeal and um, the, just the attractiveness of our community in general, improving lots um, that are older, um, and looking for people who are looking to tear down either old structures, non-usable homes, um, get rid of eyesores around the community, whether that's uh, in the business area or the residential area. Uh, so we provide up to $500 um, per, per lot if they are um, looking to tear something down or improve upon it. And it can be used for multiple lots. Um, I don't think we have a cap on how many lots we can use it for. We haven't had an issue with people applying for <laughs> Um, an exorbitant, exorbitant amount of spaces. Um, this is used, like I said, quite a bit. I think we usually have three or four um, individuals or businesses that apply for this every year. Uh, we just require that once they tear down a structure that they either fill it in and make it, um, make it safe and usable and uh, improve the appearance of the property before we will disperse funds, we also make sure that they had paid all the dump fees or any fees to the city that they um, that they owe before we disperse the funds to them. And and yeah, it's, I think it's gone a long ways to towards helping people and encouraging residents and businesses to um, to look at getting rid of some of the eyesores that pretty much any any community has on um, at some degree. So um, and yeah, and that is pretty much. What I have um, are other offerings that we use quite a bit for businesses. Um, we offer we have our own uh, low interest uh, loan pool. Um, we usually uh, have a rate of around three percent on those, and uh, uh, about five to ten year rates on those. Um, most of our loans are anywhere which from a thousand to twenty thousand dollars. We usually don't go much beyond that because if we if they need uh, funding beyond that, it's usually um, better for a financial institution or like the uh, Lewis and Clark Regional D uh, Development Council. Um, so that's been pretty heavily used throughout the years. Um, and then we are also do quite a few community sponsorships for the Bank of North Dakota Flex Pace Interest Buy Down Program. I think we have seven right now that we're sponsoring. And it's, yeah, it's heavily used. And I mean, we've get, gotten really great feedback from business owners that it really, um, has helped them with big, you know, big projects that they've done, or even opening uh, new locations and whatnot. And they, uh, we've gotten a lot of gratitude from them for these community sponsorships. So, and with that, um, I hope I didn't talk too fast. And I, <laughs> and I'll, if anyone has any questions, thank you, Lindsay. That was really interesting. What which program is being used the most? Do you think? Oh gosh, um, I would say probably our business improvement, uh, mostly because it's kind of our um, has the broadest range of what it can be used for. Okay. Business improvement is used a lot. Marketing is, is used a lot. Um, the betterment grants, the community betterment is used a lot. But we also have to look at the fact that those have been around the longest. So we're hoping to um, see use of some of the newer ones kind of start filtering in here soon. Lindsay, okay. does your funding source vary by program, or do they all come from the same funding source? They all generally come from the same funding source. So we're lucky. Well, I should say, should say lucky, but uh, we have our since we have the charitable gaming uh, side that we are able to use those funds. Um, most of uh, the funding comes from there, and then if we are if we need to, we request sales and use dollars from the economic development side of um, the sales and use tax. So it's either you know gaming dollars, a combination of both, or sales and use. Um, so that's pretty much pretty much it. I don't know if anyone's familiar with how charitable gaming works, but um, we're required to um, put 60% of our gross proceeds into a trust account that can only be used for um, eligible uses as determined by the state. And so, I mean, and they're they're pretty widely. Um, or I should say the um, the uses that you can use those funds for are there's a, a lot of them mostly charitable. Um, it could be anything from alleviate alleviating um, cost burden to city, state, or municipality, ambulances, fire, 
uh, fire protection units, um, schools, any kind of, um, you know, they, something as broad as the needy or wildlife, that kind of stuff. And so we uh, use those funds for our grant programs, economic development, all that kind of stuff. And then we also um, accept applications for gaming funds for, from local, local charitable groups, as well, as well as charitable groups in the other communities where we have gaming. So that's where we get most of our funding from, but then supplemented by the sales and use tax. Lindsay, this is uh, Beaver Brinkman. Um, any idea how, what type of grants, um, uh, what dollar amount goes out in a year uh, through these different programs? Let's see, we provided in excess of 24000 for interest buy-down funding um, for our charitable disbursements for the Garrison area for marketing grants or betterment grants. So this encompasses, let's see, we had $1,000 in betterment grants, um, about 1000 in marketing, student loan repayment grants, $12,000. Um, business improvement grants was about 20000 and other charitable disbursements from anything from the hospital to the schools to um, dollars for scholars, um, Fort Stevenson State Park, that was about 26000 And then we also disbursed about 66000 to our other communities where we have gaming for similar uses in their community. All right, thank you, Lindsay. Um, now we're going to switch over to Ellen Huber from Mandan, who's going to talk about some of the programs that they offer. Um, so maybe just to preface um, why Mandan um, has some of the incentives that we have, maybe as compared to you know other of the larger communities in the state. So our population. Um, as of the new census numbers released last week, uh, is about 22,600. Um, but as a sister city to Bismarck, um, we know that um, our commercial property tax base has not been nearly that of Bismarck's, nor our um, collection of sales tax, which is used for property tax buy-down, as well as economic development, infrastructure projects, and um, debt service. And so uh, increasing our commercial property tax base and our, our retail and restaurant offerings has been important to our community from a dollars and cents perspective in that it's the number one way that we can help keep property taxes in check. Um, but also from the standpoint of being more than a bedroom community and being able to provide um, products and services to um, residents and, and businesses that they readily expect um, and just for you know, that overall quality of life as we're now in that um, challenge like everyone else to um, retain and attract workforce. So that's kind of some of the... The background, um, I've been with the city of Mandan now for um, 13 years, and so the, most of these programs have been put together in the, uh, with the exception of a few things that are kind of under the state umbrella in, the, in that last 13 years. What you see here is a, a screenshot of a, um, I guess it's a six-page flyer now that we um, usually try to update annually that describes our incentive programs as well as sources of assistance for businesses in all stages of their life cycle. And we um, mail this every time we update it, so you know, ideally annually or every 18 months, to all businesses in the community too. So that, um, because one of the things that sometimes we've you know, taken um, a little bit of heat on is, you know, do we only assist new businesses? What about those of us that have been here for years? And so we really try to stress that all of these programs are available not just for new businesses, um, but for existing businesses that are expanding as well. Uh, we are more limited in that capacity of if it's an existing business that's status quo. And then the program types there's going to be some that are community-wide and some that depend on location, with there being more programs for the Main Street downtown area, too. So I'll start with those that are um, community-wide. I think our Restaurant Rewards program was our, our newest program and one that we um, ultimately found to be very effective. 
this program was um, conceived in um, the spring of 2016, and um, the impetus for it was that um, we had the demand uh, quantified through um, looking at uh, retail gap analysis data annually that at that time we were obtaining through Nielsen uh, Claritas, and, and they've since sold that division to a Canadian company, but it costs you know, about 100 to $200 a year to get uh, a retail gap analysis for um, our county area. And so it was quantified, but it was also coming through qualitatively through household surveys that we had conducted. Um, in fact, uh, given a choice between things like more restaurants and lower property taxes, and I think we even had improved streets on there, restaurants came through as the number one way to improve Mandan in our last community-wide survey. Um, and then we were also hearing about it from, from businesses who needed that place to have a lunch with clients or some place to go after five. And we certainly knew it was affecting um, our ability. We have great tourism attractions in Mandan, but we're not doing a very good job of getting those people to stay in our community and to, to shop and eat in our community. So they were tending to visit the attraction and then head across the river to, to Bismarck to spend the rest of their money. So it was important from, from really all of those standpoints. Um, so the, the program had two components to it. It um, offered a rebate of our 1% local sales tax. So we have a total 1.75% sales tax now, but that three quarters of a cent is dedicated to paying off debt for a sports complex, and so that was a voter approved um, tax, and then that one will go away when that sports complex is paid for. But the 1% is, you know, goes back to 1991 and Home Rule Charter uh, implementing that for purposes of property tax buy-down, economic development, infrastructure assistance, and um, debt servicing. And so we can control that one and, and rebate that back. It's not capped, so the more the restaurant sells, the higher their rebate. On the other hand, it limits the risk to the, um, the public sector or the taxpayer because if they're um, not successful, they're also not going to get a whole lot of a um, a rebate, so it doesn't require dollars up front and the city betting on the um, success of the of the restaurant. And then the other piece of it was in our growth fund, which is a portion of that 1% sales tax, 300000 annually set aside for economic development. 162000 in that fund was set aside to provide uh, the local share of an interest buy-down uh, in the form of a, um, a forgivable loan, which functions like a grant. So with our other interest buy-downs that we do, we structure the local share as a repayable loan. And so that was available on a uh, first-come, first-served basis. So we did um, sunset the program, it allowed it to sunset on March 31st of 2019, but essentially when it was approved in 2016, it was extended again in 17 and, and 2018 because we had not yet reached our, our goals at that point. I would say that it really took that whole first year to communicate the program. We only started, we got two restaurants open in the, in the um, last quarter of 2016, but the rest happened in, in 2017, 18, and even now in 19. Um, so 10 new restaurants approved under the program. Um, and, and again, seven of those are already open and three uh, remain to open. Um, the, the picture that you see here is one that's opening yet this summer. Um, I, uh, um, mom and dad and, and their daughter and her husband purchased the building and so it's also a renaissance zone and storefront improvement um, project too. So we do allow um, layering of incentives as long as the, um, the business project independently meets the requirements of each program with no overlap. Um, I would note that 
with this restaurant rewards program, we were able to attain uh, new restaurants for all three of our major business districts, um, with the majority going in the Main Street downtown area, but also getting us some improved services off of our I-94 primary exit, and as well on Memorial Highway, known locally as the, the Strip, and the area that kind of uh, butts up against the river with Bismarck. Um, and they also came in, in different categories. So we have um, those that are um, franchises. Uh, and all of these, I would note, with the exception of Arby's, have local ownership too. So what we really found was it was a lot easier to convince somebody um, with local ties to say yes to investing in our community than trying to recruit from um, the corporate world or um, decision makers outside of, of our, our local area. So Arby's would be the only exception. It's owned um, in this region by the Karish brothers who operate out of Wyzetta, Minnesota. But otherwise, all of these have, have a local tie. And so, um, again, a lot that, that set our community apart as offering some um, unique concepts that you won't find across the river. And again, they came in um, all service levels. Um, a real goal in this program was to get more sit-down casual dining in Mandan. And, but at the same time, we didn't limit it to that concept only because of needing more restaurants and more locations as a whole throughout the community. But we were, um, have been glad to uh, achieve um, with the opening of two more this summer. We should have four in that um, more full service where they where you um, get to place your order at the table and receive your food at the table. One thing I would note with all of our uh, incentive programs is we had a, a citizen-initiated ordinance that went on the ballot in 2008 that requires the installation of an automatic door with uh, any in business incentive program that comes from the city of Mandan. And so that, those automatic doors, if a building doesn't already have one, they come at a cost of about $2,000. And so we did have one of our restaurant rewards um, uh, businesses that was approved that has not installed that automatic door and they've um, you know, now surpassed their deadline to do so and they, so they will not be receiving um, any in, in, uh, rebate. They haven't received any to date, nor will they. So. Um, that's just one of the, the compliance things we have to check for on the back end. Um, just one last thing, you know, in terms of we're, we're definitely seeing an uptick in our um, restaurant sales tax collection. So we also have a 1% tax on um, restaurant and lodging. And while lodging is blended into it this, we know that we actually had a decline of about 11% in our lodging tax collections last year on the separate 2% um, hotel occupancy tax. So we know that all of this increase and then some is coming from, from restaurants. Another incentive then that we have is one, um, we call it a retail incentive, and it is for businesses that fill a retail gap in our community. Um, definitely we are lacking on um, all um, types of clothing and, and footwear, and so um, here in the photo is an example of a, a shoe store. Um, they actually um, relocated from Bismarck to Mandan, but it was not one that we approached at all because we are you know, definitely not, not um, going to be involved in any sort of predatory uh, business recruitment practices, but they were um, seeking to relocate and, and came, came to us to ask for assistance with that um, process. Um, this program offers up to $5 per square foot in assistance. It's a maximum of $20,000 um, per business or, or um, property, like let's say the, you know, the proprietor has more than one type of business operating out of the same space, it would be limited to $20,000. It, um, it acts like a grant, but structured as a forgivable loan, so if they were to relocate their, um, their store or business outside of our community within five years, we would claw back um, a prorated share of the, the stipend that they received. So it's forgiven in, in fifths over five years. 
um, and it's paid in 12 monthly stipends after the first month of operation. So they still have to you know, be able to kind of cash flow their opening, and then this is meant to be for those extra things. Particularly, we see new businesses cutting themselves short on marketing, so we, we like it if they allocate that stipend toward their marketing. Um, here's just an example of a 3,000 square foot retail shop. If they were to receive $5 per square foot, it would be 15,000 over the course of their first year of operation, or 1,250 per month. And again, the, the 13 different criteria, if you look at um, cityofmandan.com slash incentives, you'll find the program overviews and application forms and, and details on any of these incentives. But includes everything from the strength of their business plan and financials to um, their upfront investment, how broad their customer base is, um, and, and that sort of thing. So another example here was we didn't have any sort of a music store in Mandan, and so we had a young entrepreneur um, open guitar lot, and he received an incentive. We find most of them get um, ranked at about a three-quarter rate, and so they're getting about $3.50 per square foot. Okay. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on property tax exemption because this is a, you know, one of the state tools that we're allowed under Century Code. Um, we are limited to use of this tool for primary sector businesses, and we have come up with a policy um, for use in evaluating applications. We've only received one application since legislation changed in 2013 that limited this to primary sector. Um, businesses. We had anticipated another one this spring and got our policy all up to date, but in the end that um, primary sector business has put their expansion plan on pause for at least six months. Um, remodeling exemption is also available under state statute to um, any municipality. It, under state statute, would allow for the entire um, improved um, value of a of or the improved increment to be um, exempted from property tax for five years. We um, limit that a little bit further through our assessing office to three years. And then um, we have a Renaissance Zone program. We just approved our 79th project here in the last week or two. Um, 28 block area for us. We do give the full five years of property tax exemption on the whole value of the building as improved. And so that's what sets it apart from a commercial remodeling exemption where it's only on the improvement and not on the building as improved. Probably our most successful program really in combination with the Renaissance Zone program in improving the look of our Main Street and downtown area has been a storefront improvement program in place since 2006. We've had 49 buildings in the down greater downtown and Main Street area improved under this program. We've learned a lot through it over the years. When we started, it was a $10,000 matching funds, dollar for dollar match required. Um, and at the time, we didn't have limitations on like paint only or sign only projects. So those can be included now as part of a project, but it can't be the predominant part of the project. Um, we've also found that we have a lot of building owners that seem to also be licensed commercial contractors, and so we now require that they have two other um, cost quotes and hold them to the lowest of those, which is naturally going to be their own because, of course, they'll you know, lower their quote if, if needed, but at least it helps keep them honest on um, hours of labor and labor rates. Materials aren't, you know, a problem when you have actual invoices for, for building materials, but it was the labor rates and the number of hours of labor that we were, we were seeing some goofy things on. Um, we require that they address all visible signs of blight on the street-facing sides of buildings now, too. So we had some, what I would call, less than comprehensive projects in the early days. And this is a once only, you know, per building. I mean, not to say that a another city commission in 50 years might not allow a building to participate again, but at least for the, the, um, the immediate future, they can't participate in it and do only half of a project and then come back a few years later and, and want to dip in again and do the other half. Okay, um, and then lastly, and uh, Lindsay referenced the Lewis and Clark Development Group 
for us in our area. They've been a tremendous partner for those of you in, in other areas. Your um, regional councils um, may have um, similar programs, but Lewis and Clark twice approached Mandan back in 2007 and 2009 to um, point out opportunities to apply for a USDA Rural Development Intermediary Relending Program loans of $750,000 each. We needed a match of $250,000 for those to form um, $2 million revolving loan pool. So our growth fund relinquished direct control of that money, but it means that we no longer are in the, the lending business as um, directly through the city of Mandan. And businesses love it because their applications kind of fly just a notch below the radar screen. I mean, certainly it's still subject to all public information requirements, but it's not winding up on the front page of the Bismarck Tribune like a, a request directly to the Growth Fund Committee does. And then we have the North Dakota Opportunity Fund that uh, Garrison is a part of that um, with us, and there are um, a total of 38 municipalities. Um, there's one other consortium in the state called the Red River Corridor Fund, I believe, and that has another 38 municipalities. So if you're fortunate enough to be a part of either one of those, that's a great tool too. And and this is probably, um, you know, um, maybe even more over our storefront improvement program, the most widely used program, and uh, particularly by existing businesses that are expanding. And then we do tap those loan pools now for the local share of interest buy downs because our growth fund with only 300,000 allocated per year, like right now we have a balance of only 150,000 in our growth fund. So we just don't have the funding um, resources to accommodate all the requests that that come our way and that we, that we want to support. So we're fortunate to leverage those loan pools. I have one question for both Ellen and for Lindsay, if you're around. I'm wondering, when you were developing these programs, were there com communities that you looked at that had um, similar programs that you kind of modeled these after? Or where did you come up with the, the ideas for these? Yeah, absolutely. Um, storefront, back when we started that one, there weren't many communities in the state that had that one, but Fargo was one that did, as I recall. But we found, I think, quite a few examples out of state, you know, just through Google searches too. And so kind of picked and chose what we thought were the best practices from the programs that we could find to put together our own. And then we review it um, pretty much annually and, and make, um, you know, rule changes to it as needed as we've run into, you know, hiccups and that kind of thing. Yeah, and with the, I was going to say with Garrison, it's a similar story. We just um, reached out or researched some of the other small communities or smaller communities in North Dakota and kind of see what's worked for them or look what their offerings are and see if it's something that we could adopt here. And yeah, it's just lots of lots of talking to other communities and researching and just uh, throwing ideas around. Like our restaurant rewards, I'd heard a few examples of communities using sales tax rebates in targeted ways for a specific community goals. And we were really looking for something that didn't require us to dig into those limited growth fund offers. And so a, a rebate was a real low risk way to do that. And that retail stipend program, we looked at things like creating a business incubator or like a retail incubator but then you're forcing people into a certain space with their business. And one of the things, while that I think is great from the standpoint of mentoring and networking and the support with one another and maybe some shared costs, it, it does kind of pigeonhole them into a certain piece of real estate. And so um, as we studied those, we found that so much of the cost went into the, you know, either the owning of the real estate and the operations and the overhead and that kind of thing. And we thought, well, we'd rather give the support directly to the business if we could. And so this allows them to choose the location that fits their needs and then you know, apply for that assistance rather than pigeoning them all into a, a retail incubator. Yeah, and Ellen, I think that's smart because we do have a, a small building that we own that we've kind of geared towards just business incubation in a less formal way. And 
and it's it's been successful as in there's two businesses in there that are doing well um the mistake we made though is we didn't um kind of sunset the <laughs> when they have to be out and kind of move on because they are they're there full time um mm -hmm. and so i think that's why we created the rent incentive program trying to fill the empty spaces instead of just our business incubator because it's it's uh it's worked well for some purposes, but it's also been um we've also uncovered a few mistakes that we made with that program and we'll uh move forward with a slightly different approach, I think. Yeah, and, and you know, we looked at that um we just have some greedy landlords, so that's why we yeah. have to provide <laughs> the incentive to the business to make sure that they're benefiting. Um, you know, as compared to so, you know, landlord Charge what you will and compete for businesses to lease your location, but but our our. And you know that was my my thought about when they when my board came wanted to do the uh, rent incentive program to the landlords. Is my thought was to go directly to the businesses, and they they decided they still wanted to do this one, but we still will offer. We kind of have a, another program I didn't mention too much, um, just a basic business startup assistance where. Essentially, we just accept business plans from businesses looking for assistance, and we see where we can plug in um, their needs with our programs, and uh, we will do like rent subsidies directly to them in certain situations. But yeah, exactly why um, my board decided to go towards the direction of offering to the directly to the landlords. I'm a little fuzzy on, to be honest. <laughs> Had there been a Main Street program in 2006 and seven? Could have saved me a lot, a lot of hours of work and pain. <laughs> You know, there just wasn't a good sharing mechanism for these kinds of, you know, um, retail and community development kinds of um, mechanisms. Everything was, you know, through the Department of Commerce was primary sector, primary sector, primary sector. Right. Yep. Well, and I'm hoping that, that these examples can be a resource for other communities in North Dakota that might be interested in some of these programs. Well, this has been a great, great conversation and lots of good information. Um, so I really appreciate both of you taking the time to put these presentations together and to um, share information from your communities.